Hey folks, welcome to another VR video. Today we're actually going to go through a little bit of what the earliest version of Android XR is like. I've loaded up the Android XR device emulator from Android Studio, and we're just going to walk through what it offers. Kind of the look and feel of what you might see if you had the new Samsung prototype device, the Project Muhan. Muhan, incidentally, means infinity in Korean, and it is a headset that might be used to show the infinite possibilities of Android XR. Now, the screen that you see in front of you looks a lot like your standard Android home screen in front of some big rocks. Uh, these rocks would be the virtual environment. There's also a way to switch off the virtual environment and go into pass-through mode. So what we're going to do is, there's two different ways to do that. We're going to go to quick settings here. I'll we'll click on pass-through. And what it's doing now is it's giving us uh, the room in front of us in pass-through mode. So I'm not particularly a fan of where this put us. So we're going to do the pan mode to move a little bit over. There we go. Now we're sitting in front of a table. That makes more sense from my perspective. Now we bring the menu back up here and you can see we are now in pass-through mode and we're sitting in front of a coffee table with our menu structure here. If we want to go back into the virtual environment, we can just click here, take us out of pass-through, back into the virtual environment, click on the menu, bring the menu back up. So we now have virtually uh, what we would have for the different windows here. So if we open a Chrome window, it's going to bring up, you name it, my logged in version of Chrome. Let's search for Android XR, but let's actually use the virtual keyboard on the screen to type this out. with Android Studio Tools. If I wanted to, I should be able to click and drag this to reposition it, and I can. I've just done that now. So if we bring up our menu again, it's going to put it in front of that window. Uh, and let's go ahead and open the Play Store. So if we open the Play Store, it puts it kind of in front of that window. If we want to get rid of that, we can kind of just grab around the edges here, put it off to the side. Now if we want to simulate tilting our head, we actually have the ability to do that as well. We can click and drag, and you can see the Android Studio tools over here. You can see the Play Store over here. Now inside the Play Store, there's a limited library of titles that are already set up for your XR device. So if we click on Get to Know Your XR Device, Create, Explore, and Enjoy, this brings up some of those titles. So it says, get to know your XR device, your own personal theater. We've got immersive entertainment here. Uh, there's a program called Never. There's also Mirscape. We'll just actually click on each one. So this is a special search features and various services for smartphones. Okay. And then we've got Mirscape tabletop RPG games. Um, which looks like kind of an AR style game. And then Asset 15, an AR story game. So those are all titles that might be available once Android XR is on other devices. Uh, in this case, Focus Productivity gives us Google Drive, Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Calendar, Google Photos. I'm going to go ahead and install Google Photos here. And this will install directly on the emulator. There's also the Knowledge Playground, which currently only has Google Gemini. And then Fostering Connections, which is, again, a suite of Google apps. You've got Gmail, Google Voice, Google Chat, and Google Meet. And then a third-party title called Trip Mobile. Uh, this is one, again, not compatible, but will be compatible with the actual Android XR devices. Uh, I've used Trip with multiple VR and AR devices in the past, so it is one I'm very familiar with for relaxation. 
So there's not a whole lot that's already available in the XR device section, and most of the titles are not available to even install in the emulator. But if you click on search, you've got pretty much everything you could possibly want here. Uh, this is indeed the Google Play Store. So you've got Netflix, you've got Max, you've got Plex, you've got Xbox, you've got YouTube, you've got Pluto TV, you've got you name it. All these different applications uh, that should be supported once Android XR becomes available on devices. Uh, we'll just pick Crackle here. Let's see what it says. And you can install it. So we'd be able to install that directly here on the device. Uh, we're going to close the Play Store. We're going to rotate back over. And I'm assuming that there's actually a second page of applications that I missed. And there is, of course. Um, so we've got Photos, Clock, an open XR sample, so that'll be interesting. We'll check that out in just a moment, but let's click on photos because it should bring up my Google Photos here. And eventually, you're actually going to be able to have like a spatial photo uh, from any 2D photo or spatial video from any 2D video. That'll be integrated into true Android XR. But for now, we're going to go ahead and close out of this. We're going to close out of the Google Chrome window. We're going to relaunch our menu structure swipe over. I'm curious what this open XR sample actually looks like. And we can do track data in your immediate environment. Also facial tracking, it looks like. And it doesn't seem to actually load anything. So that's unfortunate. So let's look at our recent apps. Let's clear all that's a bummer. I was actually excited to see what that open XR sample would do. Um, doesn't look like it does much of anything just yet, um, but still very cool, very curious to see how that works. So overall, not a whole lot here. Um, you've got the background, you've got the ability to render 2D windows. Let's actually see how many 2D windows we can pull up. Let's, uh, there's one. Does that pull up a second Chrome or just one? It's just one Chrome. All right, let's put that over here. Let's do this. Let's pull up the Play Store. All right, let's, uh, let's do this. Let's pull up Settings. Settings pulled up in front of the Play Store, so you can put that over here. Uh, let's go back to the Play Store. Let's drag that up a bit. I'm going to try to fit as many of these windows as we can. I'll try to move this over here. There's three. Now the other thing you can actually do is move closer or further away. So we're going to back off a bit and then we'll rotate a bit. You can see those three windows there. Only one window seems to remain in focus at all times though, which is kind of strange. I'd like to be able to, you know, click on and see all three of these windows at once. I'm going to do one more window just to see if it'll even load it. So let's go over to files. Let's pull that up. And it does pick up a fourth window for files. Let's drop that down here. Let's see if we can do one more. Let's just do calendar. Oh, calendar keeps stopping. Let's just close that up. So let's do one more. Let's do, uh, let's do photos again. So we've got photos here. Let's pull that up. And what I'm wondering is if you can actually resize the window. You can, it looks like. Okay. So we've got me there again. So we do have five windows open at once. Uh, we can pan and scroll between them. We've got the uh, settings over there. We've got the Android Studio web page from Google Chrome there. We've got our files there with a virtual SD card. We've got Google Photos there. And then if we click behind Google Photos, actually, let's move the Google Photos a little bit. Oh, it actually, there it is. There's the Play Store. 
and the Play Store there. So we've got five different windows here all at once. Um, again, we have the ability to move inward and outward. So if we go in, we can get very close to that screen. And I'd imagine you can actually set these windows where you want to in your environment. So very similar to the Apple Vision Pro or other devices in that category, it's fixed off so you'd be able to walk up to the windows and see them much larger. And we'll go ahead and close these all out. Now if we pull up the menu, it's slightly rotated because we are slightly rotated. We'll go ahead and fix that. So if we click on home, obviously it'll remove the home. You have to click on the home button to bring it back. Recents just shows you the recent apps that you had open. Looks like it still had calendar there. We've got notifications. My notifications just say we have a virtual SD card and a serial console has been enabled. And then we've got quick settings. So we're on the Android Wi-Fi. We've got Bluetooth turned on. Uh, you can turn a boundary on and off. That seems to be disabled, at least for right now. You can set a pass-through window instead of pass-through. Um, and you can adjust that pass-through window for using a keyboard or keyboard and mouse in this mode. Let's see what, what else we've got here. If we click and drag. We've got your standard screencast, screenshot, airplane mode, location, font size. Ah, an adjustment for floor level. That would make sense in a VR headset. Color correction, color inversion. And then dump sys UI utility, which is probably something that you would use more so if you were testing a development app. And then security and privacy. If we hit the plus button here, uh, it looks like the only thing that's not here right now is quick share. So that's your quick settings. If you click on settings, it pulls up that full on settings. You've got network and Wi-Fi. You've got connected devices, apps, notification history, battery, storage, display. I'm just curious what it says under display. Nothing, nothing special on display. Uh, wallpaper, we could choose from the gallery, the photos or wallpapers. Accessibility, again, there don't seem to really be any specific XR settings here. Uh, security and privacy, that's normal. Location, passwords and accounts in Google have my login information. Uh, we've got the different options that you would normally have. We're on Android 14 for this particular emulated device. And then about this device, uh, we've got the device name. I am curious if we click on the build number, does that give us developer options? And it seems to. So if we go back to system now. So now I've gone to system. If we click on developer options. And it's very much the same developer options that you would have for any other device. Uh, it's not anything special. It really feels just like an Android tablet. So close out a system, we'll bring back up our menu structure. And that's really about it. That's kind of just a walkthrough of what's available in the Android XR device emulator at this time. I'm excited about Android XR. Um, this really just feels like having an Android tablet on your head, which feels a lot like what I felt like the Apple Vision Pro was. Uh, so I'm curious what developers will make of this. I know that there are developer boot camp sessions as early as this month happening. And I'm really interested to see what becomes of Android XR and the Android XR ecosystem, both on smart glasses with something like Project Astra and on more XR headset style devices like the Project Muhan device. I don't know um, what else is coming at the time that this video comes out. I know CES is just around the corner. I know there have been announced partnerships with Lynx, Sony, and Xreal, three of my favorite 
XR development companies. So I don't know what to say other than I'm excited. I was excited enough to do kind of a deep dive into this emulator, even though there's not a whole lot there, unfortunately. But I hope this video was informative. I will be back with more content soon. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR for yourself. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye now.